everybody, this is B, and we are back again with Red Handed Robin. Okay, so the problem is, um, I was playing this a while back, and continue. Yeah, um, a lot of it got cut out. So we can't do that. So we need to find, like, like, because I deleted it on accident thinking I was safe. I was not safe. So we're going to go here. Uh, we threw him out the window. Okay, I don't know if this was recorded, but basically he's playing a game and you have to figure out how to lie so you don't get, well, tell you the truth tell the truth but also lie at the same time he'll know if i'm lying on a yes or no question but so long as my answer is technically true fletcher can't tell the difference i can say whatever i want we threw the case with the jewels out the window early this morning fletcher's face twisted in anger as his eyes pulsed you can't say anything between questions can you that's too bad because there's a lot of things i want to ask but I doubt you can do this forever. I eyed the clockwork mechanism in Fletcher's hand. I can wait. He gripped the watch tightly and I noticed something strange. His hands, they're turning black. It's al it almost looks like they're covered in soot. Fletcher's patience was completely gone. He lunged forward and grabbed me by the shirt, pulling me from my seat. Robin, does Jay know where you hid the jewels? Shit. Fletcher intended to put Jay through the same game, and Jay wasn't likely to win. He would easily give the jewels over to protect me. I tried to think of a vague enough answer that wouldn't work. He... Mm. Fletcher groaned and doubled over, releasing his grip on me. The strange creeping soot that began on his hands had now made its way up to his neck. Something was growing from his face as well. Feathers? He quickly snapped the silver thing shut and put a hand to his head. What's happening to you? You have no idea what you've stolen, and it doesn't belong to you. Give. It. Back. <laughs> Having freed themselves from the wardrobe, Jay and Ren, which they're locked in a closet together, I don't know if you guys got to see that either, uh, sur quickly searched the cabin they were in. But one of them was having more difficulty than the other. Shit, I can barely see. I'm so fucking useless. Calm down, I'm looking for them. Ren scoured the room, but there was no sign of Jay's glasses or his gun. There's no use staying here any longer if we have to move, get moving. What about you? Don't you have a gun in your cabin or something? No, Buster doesn't exactly let me walk around armed. So you're even more useless than I am. I did just untie you in there. <laughs> oh, that scared me. Over their bickering, they heard a loud crash come from the hallway. Okay. I just checked back. And there's a lot missing from my video, unfortunately. So basically, Fletcher went and was questioning us. I'm sorry you guys didn't get to see that. I deleted the video and messed up. So basically, it's talking about how Jay knew us from the last video. He's basically trying to save us and keep us from dying. Fletcher knows everything, though, and knows way too much. And you had to do a lying game. So you had to balance out the lying and the telling the truth. And then you revealed that he can only do yes or no. Like, that's when he knows. So that's how we figured it out. Uh, both of them went silent and Ren crept to the cabin door. He slowly cracked it open and peered outside. There's suddenly no music. What is it? <laughs> oh, that scared me. The two of them whispered while the ruckus in the hallway continued. I think I might have a concussion after all. Jake carefully moved to the door and looked in the hallway as well. What the fuck is that? Oh good, you see it too. Even without his glasses, Jake could tell the thing was monstrous. 
It was a great black mass of feathers with glowing red eyes scattered across its entire body. That's another one. It was hard to tell, but there are fact too. The lodger had a smaller one pinned to the ground. It's eating it. Yeah. Back! It chanted in a haunting, echoing voice as it tore into the corpse. Was that magic you were talking about? No, I've never seen anything like that before. While looking for a way around, Ren spotted something. Jay, the gun. It's there on the floor next to them. Great, go get it. Me? Yes, you. I can't even see it. Ren knew he was right, but it didn't make it any less daunting. He stilled himself and darted into the hallway. Crouching low and trying not to make a sound, it carefully made his way forward. When he was close enough, he reached down and grabbed the gun. But one of the monster's many eyes spun in its socket and landed directly on him. Shoot it! Ren's arm shook violently as he squeezed the trigger. And his nerves got the better of him. He shot went wide, completely missing. Give. It. Back. The monster lunged at him, dragging the half-absorbed smaller one with it. It knocked him over, pinning him to the ground. His mind went black blank as the monster's eyes reflected his terrified face back at him. It raised one of its clawed limbs and... Crash. Something heavy smashed into it. Jay had thrown a chair and now its eyes were on him. Shoot again, idiot! R right Coming back to his senses, Ren ignored his reflection and took aim once again. He pointed the gun at the biggest, brightest eye he could see. This time, the shot connected. Get if The light drained from its many eyes and it slumped over dead. Ren closed his own eyes and tried to catch his breath. What the hell was that? You completely missed the first time. Jay dragged out from under the monster's corpse and pulled him to his feet. Uh, perhaps I should have mentioned I'm a terrible shot under pressure. I nearly failed out, failed out of the academy because of it. What kind of police officer are you? Not a very good one, admittedly. You're getting less intimidating by the minute. Come on, we have to go. Ren nodded. Give me the gun. I can't see very well, but at least I'll shoot with my eyes open. No, I'm fine. I won't miss again. Hope you're right. Our cabin is pretty far from here, but I think that's where she would go if she could. We should head that way. Right. Ren led their way down the car and into the next. As they crept down another passenger cabin, the door at the opposite end creaked on its hinges. And here. Jay grabbed Ren by the arm and pulled him into an empty room. Get if Heavy footsteps resonated in the empty hallway as the two of them waited for them to pass. Give. Another door opened, then shut. The monster had passed them by heading further down the train. What are they doing? It sounds like they're looking for something. The eye, maybe? Then they're heading in the wrong direction. If it was among the things we took from Sullivan, it should be on top of mine and Robin's cabin. That's assuming no one has found it. If they have, then... He trailed off, not wanting to say it out loud. It's gone now. Let's go. Jay left the room and continued down the car. Ren followed silently after him. They walked in the dark halls quickly and silently, watching for more signs of the strange monsters. Eerie noises could be heard from behind the closed door cabin doors, though neither of them wanted to investigate further. Ren stopped at the cabin just before the entrance to the next car. Do you hear that? Jay strained his ears. The cabin door was slightly ajar inside. He could hear a woman quietly sobbing. He nodded and the two of them stood on either side of the door. Jay knocked as Ren held the gun at ready. Is everything all right? The door burst open and a blur of feathers lunged out into the hallway. Ren quickly took aim. Wait! Stop! But the elegant woman darted between them, shielding the monster. Please don't hurt my husband. Your husband? Forward looking man. Please, he won't harm you. 
Is that so? Perhaps you could tell that to the one that just attacked us. Over the woman's shoulder, Ren took a closer look at the man. Jay, I think she's telling the truth. The woman pleaded with him. Just leave us be, please. He He's only trying to protect me. Ren expected Jay to have no sympathy for someone other than himself or Robin, but he was pleasantly surprised. Why is he like this? What happened to him? I, I don't know. Back in the lounge, something was strange. I fell asleep, and when I woke back up, he was... He was this. Cool. He spoke in the same echoing voice as the other. We ghoul. Ghoul? He nodded his head. The man reached into his pocket with his long, clawed hand and drew something out. He held it aloft and pointed. It appeared to be a silver pocket watch. Too many. Too long. He was struggling to get his point across, but Ren thought he understood. I've seen something like that before. It's like the one Fletcher uses. Ren put his hand to his chin. You're one of them, aren't you? You're a witch. Is that what happened if you use magic too long? The man nodded again. A witch? Is that true? Why didn't you tell me? Fletcher says all witches are cursed. This must be what he meant. Too many. Too long. The man repeated himself and put the watch back in his pocket. They see. They? A crash came from the car ahead, startling them all. The man's eyes momentarily glowed brighter and his feathers bristled. Too close. He took hold of his wife's arm and gently pulled her to the opposite direction. Wait, wait I have something for you. She went back into her cabin, reappearing a moment later. I found these in the lounge when I woke up. I think they're yours, Jay. She held out a pair of gold-rimmed gold glasses. Jay took them gently and put them back on. Thank you. The elegant woman gave him a meek smile. You two are looking for Robin, right? I hope you find her safely. She took her husband's hand once again, the two of them headed down the cabin away from the commotion. Ren watched them go with a forlorn look. If those things are really people, then. The one I shot? It was going to kill you. You did what you had to. Now that I have my glasses, you won't have to do it again. He held out his hand for the gun. Ren felt an overwhelming sense of relief as the gun's weight passed to Jay. You know, you're surprisingly reliable. Thanks. Crash. Another loud noise from the next car made the both, them both jump. I'm not looking forward to whatever that is. Maybe we can avoid it somehow. There's no way. It's a train. There's only two directions we can go in. Not necessarily. I have an idea. You have no idea what you've stolen. It doesn't belong to you. Give. It. Back. I darted away as Fletcher lunged forward, but a large man named Gruz caught me. Get off of me! I struggled against him with all my might. He was having trouble keeping me in check at first. Mm. But with a sudden surge of strength, he regained control. His new grip was so tight, it felt as though he might squeeze all the air out of me. Looking down, I could see the same strange soot begin to stain his fingertips. Fletcher advanced on both of us, and the feathers on his face began growing again. Tell us where it is. Give it back. All semblance of restraint had left him, and he began to grow more monstrous. My chest burned with every breath as the man holding me continued to squeeze tighter and tighter. Both of them were spiraling out of control. I can't! Hurting me! A sudden knock on the door drew their attention, and Grouse loosened his grip enough for me to breathe again. Fletcher! A man called from behind the door cabin door again. Regaining some of his composure, Fletcher eyed me with contempt before answering. Who's there? It's me, Wren! Wren? Fletcher opened the door, revealing Detective Wren. There was no sign of Jay. Where were you? Tied up? I think those women took too much of a liking to me. You don't look so good. What's going on? Did you know there are more- There are monsters 
roaming around out there? Ghouls. Witches who succumb to the curse that plagues our minds. They're walking corpses at this point. Normally it's extremely rare. And what about you? Ran eyed Fletcher who was still disfigured by magic. This is only temporary. It will reverse itself in time. Though I'm sure I'll have a few more gray hairs to show for it. Fletcher ran his hand through his hair as if to tidy his appearance. Slowly the soot and feathers faded away. There, you see? I'm nothing like the rest of them. I'm in complete control. Don't you think I should have been informed about this sort of thing? A dog doesn't need to know the plans of its master, Wren. It just needs to do as it's told. Had you been more obedient, you wouldn't have been in danger. Where's Jay? Every word set my chest on fire, but I needed to know. Yes, where is he? Were the two of you together? Ran had been avoiding looking in my direction at first, but he gave me a tiny glance before turning back to Fletcher. We were. He's dead. I killed him. You're a liar! Ren looked directly at me this time. I woke up first, so I was able to get his gun. He was tied up and unarmed. There was nothing he could do. I told him that if he told me where the jewels were, I would try to keep you safe. He agreed. And then... I shot him. Rand's tone was so flat, it was completely unlike how he acted so far. I did what I had to. Can you honestly say you wouldn't have killed me first? You're a liar. I was confused and in pain. You wouldn't do that. How could you possibly know that? We've only just met. What reason would I have to lie to you? Think about it. Think about it? The question wasn't rhetorical. What reason would Ren have to lie about killing Jay? The answer was obvious. They're working together. I won't forgive you. Fletcher chuckled. Too bad, Ren. I had a feeling you disliked seeing how close they were. But I didn't think you'd be man enough to do anything about it. Where are the jewels? He said the case is on top of the car. They tied it outside. Fletcher strode across the room and opened the window. He leaned out and quickly found the rope. I see now. You threw them out the window. She's every bit as clever as you claimed, Ren. Though I doubt she'll be willing to join us now that you've killed her lover. Fletcher struggled a bit trying to pull the case down. Grouse, go help him. I'll watch her. Uh-oh. Grouse nodded and released his grip. Ren took my took me by the elbow and pulled me in front of him. With the two men distracted and the sound of rushing wind filling the room, Ren seized the opportunity to whisper in my ear. Are you alright? He began slowly backing the two of us towards the open door. Mostly, I think I, I have some broken ribs. Where's... He's fine, don't worry. I knew Ren had been lying, but I still heaved a tiny sigh of relief. The case came loose, and Fletcher retreated back inside. Now let's see what this has all been for. He opened it with ease, something he shouldn't have been able to do. I thought we locked it. Fletcher rummaged, rummaged through its contents and quickly became agitated. It's not here. He rounded on me, his previous neat appearance now disheveled by the wind. He was looking more and more mad by the second. What did you do with it? I told you, we never had it. Bullshit. With an angry sweep of his arm, he sent the case flying. Its contents scattered across the floor of the cabin, glittered in the moonlight. It's here somewhere. We can feel it. Fletcher, your face. But feathers dappled his skin as his eyes took a faint glow. Tell us where it is. Give it back. Fletcher advanced on us, pulling the watch from his pocket as he went. Fletcher, don't. That's close enough. Jay swiftly stepped through the doorway, his gun aimed at Fletcher. He must have been listening from the outside. Don't move, either of you. Try to use that and I'll kill you where you stand. Fletcher froze in place and once again regained some control. He looked at Ren with an inquisitive smile. Helping strangers at the expense of your own livelihood, Ren. How very unlike you. You don't know anything about me. Apparently not. 
After everything I've done for you, you're just going to throw it all away? You'll never be able to return to Zeph free now. I thought you were smarter than this. Stop talking. Fletcher's attention returned to Jay and he gave him a peculiar look. You're a Graves, right? You killed him, didn't you? I told Bertram that woman wasn't to be trusted. If you're talking about my mother, you're wrong. I didn't do it for her. Is that what you think? How very brave of you. I said stop talking. Fletcher heeded his warning, but continued to wear a mocking grin. The watch? Give it to Wren. Very well. He held the watch out and Wren stepped forward to take it. Jay addressed Grouse, his gun still aimed at Fletcher. What about you? You have one too? The man looked at Fletcher, who nodded for him to comply. He pulled back his sleeve, revealing a silver watch. Wrist watch. Hand it over. Grouse removed the watch and placed it in Wren's palm. You know, I'm not a watch. It's not a watch. Not exactly. It's called a focus. I don't care what it's called. Is that so? How curious. I had thought... Uh, I better not say. Seeing Jay's puzzled face, Fletcher chuckled. Allow me to educate you then. A focus is an important tool for any moderately powerful witch. But we don't need them to use the most basic of magics. Jay! At once, there was chaos. Grouse swung a feathered fist at Ren, knocking him to the ground. Jay instantly turned and shot. Grouse doubled over, groaning as he clutched his gut. At this exact same moment, Fletcher darted forward and tried to grab the gun from Jay's hand. Jay shot and hit Fletcher, Fletcher in the shoulder. Mm, but it didn't stop him. Feathers began to grow where the wound had been. The two of them continued to wrestle for control. Ignoring the pain in my chest, I leapt forward and wrapped my arms around Fletcher's neck. He struggled to breathe as I squeezed with all my might. Jay was quickly regaining control as Fletcher ho Fletcher's hold on his gun arm loosened. Between labored breaths, Fletcher shouted, Give. It. Back. Ugh. Suddenly, I thought he'd been struck. Jay's hand shot to his head. He was knocked off balance, and three of us toppled over, sending the guns spiraling across the floor. Jay! I maintained my grip on Fletcher's neck, attempting to pressure him into letting Jay go. Jay's face was twisted in pain as he continued to hold his head in his hands. Give one of ours, after all. Fletcher let out a raspy laugh and put his hands around Jay's throat. Stop! Fletcher ignored my plea and continued to laugh. Grouse began to stumble f towards the doorway and Rand called weakly from across the room. Robin, the gun! I leapt off of Fletcher and sprinted for the door. It was no contest, even with my injuries, I made it there well before Grouse could. The large man slumped against the wall and lay there, silent and still. I scooped the gun up off the floor and turned to see Ren attempting to pry Fletcher off Jay. He's too strong. Fletcher barely seemed to notice Ren was there. I aimed the gun carefully. I'd never shot one before, but Jay had shown me how it was done. Hopefully, my confidence would be convincing enough. Fletcher, let him go! But Fletcher still didn't respond. Something was wrong. He pressed harder on Jay's windpipe, laughing all the while. Fletcher? You have it. We can feel it. Mm. Give it back so we can be whole. Robin? I don't think he's going to listen to reason. Fletcher no longer seemed in control of himself. He continued to wheeze and laugh, paying no mind to anyone but Jay. We know it hurts. It will be all over once you give it back. Jay reached into his po pocket, jacket pocket where I saw a flash of silver. Jay, don't. I had something. If I, if I didn't, Fletcher was going to kill him. I have to do it. I can't do it. Uh, this is bad. This is bad. This is real, real bad. I have to do it. Fletcher, I'm sorry. He didn't even look up as I apologized. Whoever that is now, it's not Fletcher. Ren caught on and quickly stood clear. A knot formed in my throat as I pulled the trigger. <laughs> Fletcher fell to the ground and I knew it was done. Finally free, Jay coughed and wheezed as he tried to catch his breath again. I knelt down to him while Ren went to check on Grouse. Are you alright? I, I don't know. He still seemed a little dazed as he sat up. Are you? I'll manage. 
I wasn't sure how to ask the question that was on my mind without sounding like I was accusing him of something. Before I could gather my thoughts, Ren paced by us and leaned down to check Fletcher's pulse. Dead. Both of them. Come on, let's go. He helped me pull Jay to his feet. Go where? We need to get the engine, get to the engine and see if we can stop the train. There are more of those things out there. We can't just sit here and wait for them to find us. Ren's right. Let's get moving. The three of us left the cabin and entered the hallway. In the hallway, Ren led the way to the car's end. Ren? I didn't know the full extent of it, but Ren and Fletcher clearly had history. Regardless of what it was, this couldn't have been easy for him. He turned to me with a small, tired smile. I'll be okay, I promise. For now, let's concentrate on getting out of here in one piece. He turned on the exit door and he turned to the exit door and wrenched it open. We're going up there. This way we can avoid the ghouls. Ghouls? It's what they call they're called apparently. I'm having to yell over it. I can't hear the wind. I guess this is more realistic though when I'm screaming. The wind rushed by loudly as Jay leaned outside. I'll go first and pull you up. After he climbed to the top, he leaned down, back down and reached out to me. Ren helped me help keep my balance as Jay grabbed both my arms and pulled. Mm. Pain shot through my body as he hoisted me up. Dang, this is loud. Okay, we got some issues. You are way too loud. Okay, let's fix that. Pain shot through my body as he hoisted me up. As soon as I got my footing, I collapsed onto him. You are hurt. Just some broken ribs, nothing I can't handle. Hurry, get Ren. He gingerly sat me down and went back to help Ren over the railing. As soon as we were all together... Uh-oh. The sound of breaking glass came from the car below us as a voice echoed over the howling wind. Give it back. They know where we are now. They know we have the box. Ren quickly got to his feet. We need to get off this train. Let's make for the engine and see if we can slow it down. Lead the way. I'll carry her. I don't need... He lifted me up with relative ease. Can you for once not protest while I try to help you? It did hurt just to breathe. Perhaps it was alright for now. Jay followed Ren up the precautious path to the front of the train. The wind rushed in my ears, drowning out all sound except the rim thick hum of the track. I kept an eye behind us, expecting Fletcher or one of his men to appear at the moment, any moment, though I knew that was impossible now. We made it to the front without much incident, Jay and I following after Ren at a slow but steady pace. Ren jumped the gap from the final car to the engine and began to climb down. Ready for another jump? As I'll ever be, I suppose. I instantly tensed my muscles as Jay hopped to the engine. The impact jolted me and sent pain shooting through my torso. I know. I'm sorry. Jay put me down and leaned over the edge to check on Ren. Is it clear? Ren leaned out the window. Looking confused, he called back up to us. There's no one here. So that's a yes, then. No, I mean, there's no one at all. No conductor. And the engine, it's... You just have to see it. Jay and Ren helped me with the painful task of climbing through the cabin's window. Together we took the side of the en en train's engine. Oh. I'd never been at the front of a train before, but I was certain they didn't usually look like this. A wall of silver machinery filled the room with deep, mechanical hum. In the center, a glowing green gem of some sort spun frantically in its setting. It had an eerie, lifelike quality. It almost looked like a... an eye? This machine. It looks like a giant clock. Jay pulled out the silver box. And it seemed to be made of the same material as this. The intensity of the eyes glowing increased as it swung even more wildly than before. I think it's powering the train somehow. 
So pull it out. I don't want to touch that thing. We have no idea how it works. Look at it. It's got evil magic written all over it. Suddenly the whole train lurched. An enormously loud crash came from the car behind us. Even over the rushing wind we could hear a deep roaring voice. Give it back. Give it back. The car shook in sync with the ghoul's rage. Behind us, the green eyes surged with light as well, and the train jolted into speed. Ren and I struggled. Oop, that's the timer. So, we gotta save. We're gonna save on six. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the next video. I promise not to delete it. <laughs> so, there we go.